each other's arms, in the middle of sheep's meadow in Central Park, around midnight last night, have now been made known to the public. The handsome young dead man has been identified as Rico Roma, a 79 city councilman who is in the process of trying to be re-elected again. The beautiful young dead woman has been identified as Rebecca Rusty Rubenstein, who is an unknown nighttime woman of the Midtown East Side Streets. The detectives of Manhattan and the doctors of Manhattan have all agreed to the dramatic and theatrical fact that it appears to have been a love pact dual suicide. <coughs> Kennedy's funeral, remember Louis? I remember. Thought of other funerals too, but it was really Bobby's that stuck in my mind the whole night last night. Well, anyway, it really paid off last night, didn't it? My praying my ass off the way I did last night. It sure did. I only came home with 75 cents for the day, Louis. Where did you sleep last night, Louis? Near the UN. No wonder you only ended up with 75 cents. Well, Richard Ford, in another way, I met a bunch of Hungarians, a bunch of Russians, a bunch of Irish, a bunch of Italians, a bunch of Jews, a bunch of Blacks, a bunch of English, a bunch of Germans, a bunch of Polish, a bunch of Chinese, a bunch of Japanese, a bunch of Koreans, a bunch of Spanish, a bunch of Puerto Ricans, a bunch of Scandinavians, a bunch of Australians, a bunch of taxi cab drivers, a bunch of people with VD, a bunch of prostitutes, <laughs> a bunch of people on welfare, a bunch of rich people who were drunk and falling out of their limousines, and finally, a bunch of people who just didn't give a good fuck anymore, because that's what they thought they were supposed to think nowadays. Some night for you, Louis. It sure was. I felt right at home. I gotta think about what I am, if you know what I mean, Lena. My rainbow-colored blood that's always going through my whole rainbow-colored system. Not about being part Jewish, part black, part Irish, and part Puerto Rican. And that's why I felt at home last night. Even if I only came home with 75 cents, what I mean. You're making me jealous, Louie. 
How come? I don't know. Well, I have his Italian blood in me. I feel like maybe I've been chipped. I don't feel like a rainbow the way you feel like a rainbow. Don't let it bother you, Lena. I like you just the way you are. With all that Italian blood. Remember that time you cut your finger in front of George Washington's statue down on Wall Street? I'll never forget that. Gives me chills just to think about it. Where is car yet? You were too European that night. You were cutting up that big fat juicy orange. You know what I did? And it was beautiful what you did. I'll never forget it for as long as I live. You were really bleeding. Blood all over the steps of the Federal Hall building where George Washington made his first speech to our country as first president of our country. And you knew I was an acute bleeder, so you took my bleeding gushing finger into your mouth and you drank the blood and you sucked it into the bleeding pine and stopped. Could I believe it? Hmm. Well, you know, if you weren't an Italian American, I don't know whether I would have done that or not. All I do know is that blood of yours reminded me of red Italian wine. It was a combination of Valpolicello and Bartolino. And I just know it had to do with you being Italian. So don't feel like you've been gypped, okay, Lena? Okay. Listen, no matter what, last night near the UN building, even though all those bunches of people were there too, no matter what, I always thought of you first. And I was always thinking you the whole time, too. You're really such a pussy, Dad. <coughs> I love you. The feeling's mutual. <laughs> Believe me when I tell you that. I do. What are you going to do with the five dollars? I knew you'd be asking me that. <laughs> now, first of all, I've decided to split it with you. Oh, you don't have to. But I want to. But listen. We're not taking any subways, no buses, nothing. Since the goddamn stupid fare went up to 50 cents. No, tell you something, Pussycat Louie. We're never even gonna take this Staten Island ferry anymore since you went up to a quarter. But it's for a round trip. I don't care. Not at this stage of the game anyway. I don't care. Now what we're both going to do is this. We're gonna go shopping tomorrow. We're gonna spend all of my money on things to eat and drink. You don't know I can eat without wine with every meal. By the way, what about a friend of yours who works at Maxwell's Plum? He didn't quit yet, did he? You got fired instead. That's terrible. But it's okay, Lena. Believe me, I got this other friend who works at Lunacy. You're kidding me. Lutez? That's right, Lunacy. And he told me he'd be keeping me supplied. And in turn, I'd be keeping you supplied. Just like always, Lena. Look. Dynamite Pussycat! Some couple from Florida only tried it out, but kept right on drinking their real high lives and their Walker Stangers they, while they ate their dinner. They did this at Lucas? That's right. Dear. And so my friend thought of me immediately. I went by and picked it up this afternoon from one of the assistant chefs. What's the name of it? <clears throat> well, you know the reputations of Americans in international wine circles, Lena, their name buyers. They almost always go for the Chateau of Fida Rothschild, or in other varieties, the Dom Perignon, or the Chateau Neuf Pape, or the Pomard, or the Louis Fuisse, or the California Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, baby, it's the Chateau of Fida Rothschild. I feel so good already. I'm gonna go shopping as soon as daylight comes. Let's go to Chalet and be in the village that sits open until midnight and they open the very up. Very early in the morning. We'll walk, we'll be good for us. After all, we'll have something to look forward to, won't we, Louis? We'll go down there and buy lots of cheeses, or at least a little bit of cheeses. The price of cheese is simply outrageous. We're gonna buy some fruit, apples and peaches mostly, and some bread, or maybe some crackers instead if they've got one of those marknals when they used to have those foreign crackers from France or someplace like that. And a fresh little pickle for you, fresh little pickle for me, and a nice hunk of that A&P liverwurst, which we can make believe is some fancy French pâté with truffles, which will wash down with our elegant, exotic, excellent, extremely expert type of delicious bread wine. We are nice things for you, won't we, I will love you. And I think when tonight comes again, we're gonna find a new place where we can spend the whole night together without the cops bothering us, Louis. I love you. I love you too. By the way, I do know of a new place. That little plaza behind the Burlington News building in the Zeke Theater. 
we've got those fountains that they don't turn off. It's going to be so nice and so romantic to have you fuck me to the rippling watery sounds of those rippling watery fountains. I'm going to make love to you, mm. Lena. Okay, then, to have you make love to me. You're really something <laughs> else, Louis. So are you, Lena. Mm. Aren't we doing with our lives? I'll get you. Yes, what I'm trying to say is that maybe we should think about professions after all. Professions? You know what I mean? I don't know what you mean at all. <laughs> then forget it. I will. You mean you'd be a hugger? That's right. That's really a surprise, so. Do you approve? Do you think it'd make you happy? Mm, I think so. Then I would approve. Oh, you're so wonderful. And that's because you're so wonderful. Mm. What would you be doing if you wouldn't be doing what you're doing? I'd be a politician. Mm, I like that. <laughs> I'd be helping people. Oh, that's very nice. And if you were a hooker, what would you be doing for people? Hmm. I think I'll be helping them too. That's also very nice. <laughs> I'd be a hooker, a horrible prostitute, and I'd eventually fall in love with a politician about the same age as I am. But we wouldn't meet secretly. We'd like a horrible it was the most bitter and the most violent windstorm since the beginning of time. Thousands of lives have been lost, taken away by the angry wind, the howling and furious wind. It will take years to determine the damage, but it will take forever to determine who was lost. And perhaps, why? In Central Park, right smack in the middle of Sheep's Meadow, wide open to all of the endless elements of nature, and perhaps God too, a young and beautiful couple, whose first names were Lena and Louie, were found frozen to death, standing up in each other's arms, with the two most beautiful smiles on their faces, smiling like one has never seen smiling, ever before in one's rather minute and passing life, smiling smiles that told of things like well, things like forever. <laughs>